welcome to that Generic Tech Podcast. I'm Timothy Matthews. I'm Vinny Masidi. And here we are. We're going to talk about tech. Good hooray. old tech. Yes, hooray. It's awesome. Fun stuff. How are you doing, Vince? I'm, I'm okay. I'm all right. You? You all right? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay, too. Uh, I'm just, I, I feel lost. <laughs> I, feel, lost. I, feel, I feel lost. Like, I don't know where I belong in life right now. Like I'm lost. Like you know when you just, you just you wake up and you're like, where the hell am I? That's that's how I feel right now. I don't know why. What day is it? Where am I doing? Like what day is what, it actually? Because I doing? don't even know what day it is. <laughs> um, it must be Wednesday because we're recording. We're recording. Yeah. So this week, uh, just not that bad. Like, like pretty good amount of stuff to this week. To, uh, yeah. So so. It's all right. It's you know. Um, one thing I want to mention is right off the bat is that uh, we love getting your, your guys' uh, comments, suggestions, uh, feedback. Uh, so send us emails at uh, tgtp1 at hotmail.com. Yeah. Um, we love it. And uh, we now, we're now on Google+. Plus. Yay! That's cool. Even though they oh, changed I the design on us. That. I forgot to update that, by the way. <laughs> Which, yeah, I have to get on that. Which uh, we'll, we'll we'll get on that, and uh, we're going to start doing video very 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 soon. We uh, started uh, last episode. We started working around with it. Yeah, and uh, we're going to get improve upon it, and uh, try to get uh, something out of that. And uh, yeah, so um, let's start with Microsoft Windows Phone. Hooray! The that, whole that's, shebang. That's my phone, baby. That, that's your phone. That's my phone. All right. So let's let's talk about um, Microsoft adding uh, augmented reality to Windows Phone's Bing Translator. Did you see this thing? I didn't see much of it. Um, it's pretty cool. But, yeah, it, it's it sounds it sounds okay. I guess they're kind of wanting to do like uh, what what's what's that other company doing? Word Lens. Sorry? Word Lens for iOS. Word Lens? Yes. Oh, so that exists for, for iOS? Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you, what you do is you don't even have to take a picture. You just put the phone and put it where the, the text is, and it'll translate on the fly. Oh, I thought I already had something like that, or maybe I was just dreaming. I think you were dreaming because, like, this just came out now. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, oh, that's cool. The, 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 just to describe, it's more or less just taking your phone, and when you're about to take like a picture, and you put it over text, like let's say a stop sign or something, let's say you're in Japan, uh, or a menu, you place the phone uh, on top of the menu, and it'll see the text, and it, what it'll do is it'll overlay English on top, or whatever Wait language a sec. you want to do. Oh, okay, it was for um, scan text. I could do that already. Hang well, on. now Bing has it. Oh, but, so okay, I just did it, and it's scanning my 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 screen. Okay, but you just took a picture. Finding text. I don't know. Well, th- this uh, this is pretty cool, and uh, Bing can, can interpret uh, English, Spanish, uh, German, French, Italian, and simplify Chinese. Well, I'm gonna show. I'm gonna put it up to my. You, I don't know if you could see it because kind my of. webcam is you're, is crap. You're kind of like shaky. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so I took a picture of my screen. I went, well, first of all, I I I hit my uh, my search button there down there, yeah. next to the Windows key. Yeah. I hit the search button and it, and it brings up um, Bing, right? Right. And then uh, when you do that, um, so it, it brings you to to the Bing screen. And on the bottom of the Bing screen, you have three options. It's uh, there's one called Music, Vision, and Voice. So when I when I when I hit Vision. It says scan QR codes and Microsoft tags. Okay, but that's something different. This is yeah, an actual so. different app. Oh, okay, so okay, you have so to go on the Windows Phone Marketplace and they have to download the Bing Translator app, and it's available oh, for free. Okay. So okay, you use okay. this app to just like overlay, um, you know, on top of uh, text, and it'll translate on the fly. But I just I, I did this right now. I'm doing it right now. I just translated, translated. to finish. What the whole you're, you're on the fly like it doesn't overlay on top of the image? So you just, know what it, <laughs> just right there. Look, oh, you can't see it's not that great. I gotta get myself a better. That, uh, that's okay. That that actually worked. Yeah, I gotta get myself a better webcam. Okay, but yeah, it was. So what the heck is this then? 
I already had it. Like, I don't get it. Microsoft has updated Bing Translator. Oh, it's updated. So maybe it was an update to it? I don't know. I'm going to... Because I could already kind of do it. So that's why I was like well, reading the article and I said, can't they already do this? Oh, well, there you go. So, I mean... All right, Windows Phone for the win. It can do something. <laughs> All right. Seriously, I think Windows Phone gets too much... Um, too much hate, especially from those uh, European ca- uh, carriers lately. Yeah, yeah, like what? Well, yeah, but you know what though? They don't have the Lumia nine hundred. They got like the crappier one of it. So, so just to put it in perspective, uh, a bunch of uh, European carriers are have been uh, <laughs> pretty expressive about how uh, new Nokia, Nokia is doomed, and that uh, they they will not recommend based off of like they won't recommend Windows Phone. In comparison to iOS or or Android, which has got to make you as if you're Nokia, you've got to make you very very happy. You know that your European buddies are just not helping you out, especially really, when, eh? especially when AT and T releases the phone on Easter Sunday in the United States. You know that doesn't help. <laughs> that was so dumb. Why did they do that? But apparently, I, I, I there's another article that says. Um, that they're they're keeping they they Nokia is trying to keep up for demand of the Lumia 900, which I, which I hope so too because uh, also they announced that um, it's a nice they, phone man it's they great they, they sold two million phones already with That's no, good. all Lumia devices wh- whatever that means it's not the little, necessarily the, new, the Lumia 900 but um, you know that that's that's good stuff for them you know um, I I really hope that they uh, they get through that. And uh, all that mess of changing ecosystems and whatnot, and uh, yeah, it's 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 a cool phone. Just that uh, so there's some things in Windows Phone that's kind of limiting for them, uh, like like what? the screen resolution. Yeah, I and suppose. and you know it's still single core and whatnot. But yeah, even the single core but, stuff, it's like whatever. But that, that's debatable. That's, yeah, it is that's, debatable. That's stupid. It's yeah. I, I think it, it it's stupid. But again, it's uh. It's more of an app ecosystem, and also they they just need to the Windows Phone. They need to l- take out the restrictions on the screen um, resolution. If they did that, probably the phones would get like higher resolution anyway. You know? Yeah. In ter- in well, I mean, uh, I I don't think the the screen resolution is that much of an issue. Uh, well, well, I, I mean, when you're going app, from an iPhone, app writers and if, if, for for anyone that's coming out of any other smartphone, uh, you you can you'll notice the difference. Yeah, I suppose. You know, so but, I mean, it, it's 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 still got a lot of hardships. And um, another thing that came out this week was uh, Microsoft announcing that Apollo, which is the supposed Windows Phone eight, uh, is not going to be available for current devices. Well, you know, you know what's weird about that. Um... Is uh, the first an article came out, uh, which said that it that phones would be upgradable to it, and yeah. then they just... an article came out right after and said no, that's not true. So uh, it, I don't it, know what it, the heck is going on? Uh, that... I, I don't. I don't think it's gonna be true. I don't. I don't think. I don't. I, don't, I hope for I their know. sake it's not true. <laughs> Uh, I don't, I don't know. I, I said I don't. Th- well, I I don't think Windows Phone seven point five will be upgradable to eight. That's terrible because I don't think it will. You know, people that are buying Nokia Lumia nine hundred that's supposed to be the Windows Phone cannot upgrade to version eight. Which it's like you you have the same Android stupidity that's going on right now, and people uh, are going to get royally who? ticked off because they're, they're stuck with a two to three year contract with a phone that's already a, with a phone that's already out of date. Maybe it's gonna be. It's may, maybe it'll be for some phones and not others. I don't know. I hope so. So well, so far the the article uh, people are saying that it's not gonna be upgradable. Again, we're gonna find out probably in the summer when they're probably gonna have a, an event or something like that. Probably I'm not saying there are, but they must have an event sometime to do to just outline what Windows Phone Eight is gonna be. Uh, but the, there's there's nothing coming up, eh? Like no, there's I, I don't haven't think heard there's anything, anything coming up. I haven't heard of anything, oh. but I'm assuming in the summertime they're going to announce something. The, the well, I guess, uh, I guess, I guess we'll find out. Um, I, just, I don't see it being. I don't. Okay, it's, it's either going to be. It's going to be two things. It's going to be no, 
not, no phones will be upgradable. Or, yes, only these ones will be upgradable. Maybe the Lumia 900 will be. Maybe mine will be. Who knows? I don't think yours is. Yours uh, is like one no, of the mine first won't. Ones. Mine probably won't. Mine's like the one, of the, one of the first gens that came out. It's a so. shame, though, because they could have... They could have... They could have um, they could, they, they just set a precedence and said, like, oh, all the phones are upgradable because we're awesome like that. You know? Yeah. Uh, they, they, they could still do that and not have all the features, let's say. Uh, yeah. But I mean, like, it just it just makes people really ticked off about buying these phones because they're they're going to be so obsolete and you can't even use all the new features. Uh, people now expect, especially in the world of an iPhone, where let's say an iPhone 3GS that came out with iOS 3 is now upgradable to iPhone iOS 5.1. You know, it, it's it, it it gets kind of frustrating for any other pre- people that are like just want to upgrade their damn phone. You yeah, know? but I don't know. I, I, I don't. I don't know how I feel about the whole phone upgrading thing. I think it's a. It's a big mess. It is a big mess. It's and a big I, mess I, and the, the Windows Microsoft could have made a different a differentiating factor between Android because that's Android's biggest screw up right now. Is is how yeah. it's, it's, some some devices are still running. Uh, uh, What's the first? Was it like the first it's... first version? What what was it called? Sorry, I'm just gonna grab a Kleenex here because like my nose is. Itching me to uh, like. Um, okay, hold on. Wait. Uh, first version of what? Android. Uh, yeah, the first version of. Uh, uh, what was it? What was it called? I don't know what it's Je- called. I re- I remember cupcake. Cupcake was it? I don't know. I, I can't remember. And then there was a Claire. Oh, speaking about cupcake. Uh, uh, no donut. I actually got a. Uh, I got I got a piece of cake because we were supposed to eat cake last episode. Yes. And then I ended up just getting a, a piece of cake out of nowhere. <laughs> and here's the last go. piece. There you go. And, uh, and I have a Guinness, cake. so that'll help. Tim is having Guinness, and uh, so <laughs> cheers, Tim. Cheers. Done. Done. Okay. And just for the record, that yeah. cake was phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> phenomenal. And here's my oh, cat. You guys want to see my cat? Hopefully we'll, uh, if, if we make this uh, a video, here's my cat. There we go. He's fat. Don't make fun of him. Pretty fat cat. Yeah, don't make fun of him. <laughs> hey, n- n- hey, now you're one of those internet cats. Seriously, it's a lol <laughs> cat. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway, what, what we're saying is that also that uh, the, the phones are not the, the upgrading thing is not official. Like it's sources. No. So, so yeah. let's get that straight. Uh, I really hope that they just say it's upgradable. Even if you just change the version number to eight on the damn phone. And not have all the features of the new version, it will make people that much happier because they're running something else. You know, yeah. it's upgradable. Uh, upgrade a few features, but I mean, like, you don't have to, like, you know, just put the patches for security. Well, you know? yeah, it's yeah, uh, they're probably gonna they're, well, they're gonna have to upgrade it and still support it, right? So they're probably gonna do something to it. I don't know because. Windows 7.5 apps are 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 supposed to be cross platform with Windows 8 apps. So I don't know. Okay, like so, 7.5 apps can work on Windows 8. Yeah. Windows Phone 8. Sorry. Yeah. Windows Phone 8. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be backwards compatible though. I don't know either. But this. I don't know. They say, like they're saying to developers right now. And this is an actual Microsoft uh, response to this. Is that. Uh, we have stated publicly that all apps in our marketplace today will run on the next version of the of Windows Phone, which okay. is which it's nice. That's good because that yeah. would be really stupid if they didn't do that. And then beyond that, we have nothing to share about future releases. Yeah, which is not very reassuring. But uh, I, I seriously, I, I can't recommend a Windows Phone right now. Uh, I can. I, I, I really can't. Someone, I can. someone that wants a smartphone, I, I can't recommend it because... Oh, you're just a fanboy. I'm not a fanboy. It's, yeah, you it, are. It's just that, what's the point of buying something? Tim's a fanboy. If it's going to be obsolete... No, 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 no. Tim's a fanboy. If it's going to be obsolete in what? Uh, four months? No, I, I, no I, I, I agree with you. <laughs> um, it, it's just, to a, it's to just a certain make extent, sense. To a certain extent. I, I, I recommend it for people who are just getting into the smartphone place. I'll recommend it. But you have to buy like a three-year contract. They're going to get fed up with this phone. They're going to throw it against the wall. You don't, you don't, no, no, no. They're not going to get fed up. They're coming from older phones, and it'll be like, wow, it's the best thing in the world. So, 
Mm, I don't know. And then when they're ready, they'll they'll go to iPhone because I don't see new people and people who are who are just getting in to the smartphone smartphone market. Uh, I wouldn't say get an Android because my father got my my mother an Android. Oh, she must hate it, and she hates it. <laughs> And it, she it, must it, hate it. it. But and, and, and it's like and it's like the um like like the base base version. It's like one of the base versions of it, right? Yeah. It's like it's like really plain and simple. Yeah. And she can't stand it. I know. I I, I gave my. I showed her my Windows phone, and she goes, "Wow, this is much better. I could actually I I know what's going on. She she saw how to work it. I remember because I get, it, yeah, it's easy. It's it's an easy interface to Windows. It's the easiest interface, I think. I remember I gave this phone. Uh, which is the the Desire HD to my mother, because I, <clears throat> I I I wanted my iPhone back. It was a 3GS, and I wanted my iPhone back instead of this one, my like four point something inch screen. And um, she she hated this phone. <laughs> she 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 just couldn't do stuff with it. She's like, oh, I have a browser. Like you know, it's not nothing is very evident, you know, with with the uh, with the Android phones. But I mean, <sighs> what are you gonna do, huh? Yep. What are you gonna do about this stuff? Um, I would. I want to talk about uh, a bit about Google. If you don't mind. Oh boy! Oh boy! Hey, we're in for a. Uh, we're in for uh, a tongue lashing from Timmy. Okay, because I'm really I I can't stand this anymore. So, um, Sergey Brin, okay, one of the co-founders of Google, him and uh, Larry Page. Uh, the the co-founders of Google, uh, they said that uh, you know I'll, I'll just read the probably the article uh, title is kind of misleading, but uh, okay from the Verge says Sergey Brin says China and Iran are bad, <clears throat> but okay. Apple and Facebook threaten the open web too. Did they? Uh, the, and here's here's some here's some quotes that uh, I just want to come out from this from this. Uh, from this article, so All right. he, he's pretty much saying that uh, Google he couldn't in today's climate of of political uh, oppression towards the free and open web, and um, you know for specific walled gardens, he can't he would never be able to make a Google today a search engine because he made a search engine when the web was free and he, everything was crawlable. Everything's still kind of cro- anyway. All right, keep going. So he says certain things like this. Um, he, he said he was uh, so Sergey Brin said uh, he was most concerned of, uh, by the efforts of countries such as China, Saudi Arabia, and Iran to censor and restrict use of the internet. So that I agree, right? That makes sense because it's it's the people not act. Be, it's it's censoring. Um, it's censoring the outside world. Okay. So, you know, you're hiding what uh, uh, other people are saying about, about, uh, about your, your country or, or a public opinion if, on a global level. So you're not, so the pe- citizens of China and Saudi Arabia and Iran are not be able to communicate to the rest of the world in a, in a proper <clears> way. <throat> Which I completely agree. It's not, uh, it's not something very good for, for, for the, those countries. And it'll eventually fail. I, I honestly think that. Okay. Then he keeps going. And he says, uh, uh, he also, Sergey Brenner warns that the rise of Facebook and Apple, uh, which have their own proprietary platforms and control access to their users, risks stifling uh, innovation and, and uh, balkanizing the web. <clears throat> wow. Okay, I, I, right, you know, uh, I hope Facebook is not open to Google and index from Google, because I would have a f- pretty serious problem with that. You know, you set your privacy settings in, uh, in, in Facebook, and you don't want that information to be open. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, I don't know, Apple, well, anyway, I'll get to the point why he's saying Apple as well. So, uh, so f- for example, what he was saying about that is that uh, there's a lot to be lost. Uh, for example, all the information in apps, that data is not crawlable by web crawlers. You can't search it. Yeah, 
there's a reason for that. It's called my personal information in my personal device. Why? Sh what, what is it in Google's? What is Google's problem to go that they cannot access my device with what with my personal information? If I have an app that has like you know a diary and it saves that information locally on my on my on my iPhone, why is it Google's business to search inside those apps? I don't get that. That doesn't make sense. Like, why do you have to crawl through my personal <clears> stuff? <throat> they ought to do that anyway. They cr you know that, right? Well, they crawl through what? In my iPhone, how, how could they crawl the information <clears throat> in my iPhone? Like the apps. Everything in Sandbox. Okay, no, not, not the iPhone. But Android? Probably. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, Android? I, Android, that's another ballgame. Okay. Windows? But he's complaining about Apple. Windows? In you know why? Oh, with you know, Google okay. Desktop. No, you know, you know, you know what's weird about Google Chrome when you install it on Windows. I don't know about OS X. Every other application, oh, every other application that, I, that that I've all I've, and I've installed thousands upon thousands of app, applications, right? Mm -hmm. They always install in program. If you're on Windows XP, it's going to install in program files. Yeah, Google Chrome doesn't. Okay. Yeah. And Windows 7, it's, it's going to install in pro, uh, same, same thing, program files. Google Chrome installs, install, uh, installs itself in your user directory in application data. Yeah. Why is it in that directory? Why is it in application data? That's, Why does it install itself there? And you also, when you log in with another user, you have to reinstall it. You have to reinstall it because the other user does not see it. No. It's amazing, yeah? Um, yeah, yeah, and I, I was always found that a little funny. Yeah, uh, I always uh, because you know I, I do mass deployments of Windows on in uh, in, in, in school environments, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I, 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 I you know because I, I installed I, uh, our two web browsers that we use. We used to use all three. We used to use uh, IE, Firefox, and Chrome. I got rid of Firefox because I think it's pretty useless. We don't you don't need three web browsers in, on a system image. I don't think, <clears throat> and. Um, so when I did my deployment, at first I did a test deployment, and I didn't see Chrome anywhere, but I know I installed it. Yeah. And I was like, what the heck is this? I'm like, I know I installed Google Chrome. I know I, 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 know I did. It's like one of the first applications I installed. So yeah. I, I did a search, and I realized that why the heck is it installed in application data of that single user? So I always found that a little funny. Yeah. Yeah. But this, uh, if you want to solve that problem? Google you... Pack. Sorry? Google Pack. I've never heard of that. Yeah, they, they had this. Uh, it was a, it called the Google Pack. It's uh, if you want to do a mass deployment, uh, you install you install the Google Pack, and it installs like uh, it, it pretty much gives you an option. Like all the Google services, it it brings up a window and says, "What do you want to install?" Uh, you could untick what you don't want. So oh, wow. I yeah, pretty much I installed uh, uh, was it Google Earth and uh, Chrome like that. Okay. So, so it's available on all the users whenever you log in uh, with a domain user. You can just. Uh, you know what you can do with uh, with Chrome? Uh, you can uh, do something called ThinApp. What's that? ThinApp. It's a portable Thin app. portable application. So you just save it on uh, his or her. Um, if you put in the public, uh, the public profile, which yeah. then co is copied through every. It, it's it's a sandboxed application, so it doesn't actually. It's not actually installed. It's running its own little. Virtual environment, but okay. it, you just—it's a file, so you just double-click it and it runs. It's like the, you know the, those applications that run on USB key, the portable applications. Yeah, it's the same thing. So you don't yeah. have to reinstall all the time. That's cool. Just let you know. But anyway, back to this. Yeah. Um, it's just like whatever you know. Um, anyway, uh, then so. Uh, Bryn keeps on saying that um, him and Larry Page would not be able to create Google if the Internet was dominated by Facebook. Uh, you have to play by their rules, which are really restrictive. Uh, the kind of environment we, that we developed Google in, the reason that we were able to develop a search engine is the web was so open. Once you get too many rules, that will stifle innovation. So you're stifling for innovation, meaning like what? Like Google Plus and Search Plus Your World, which only does Google Plus, and you're you're promoting your own products based off because of your search clout. Yeah, that that that's not 
stifling innovation at all, right? Or that that's not uh, dominant using your cloud to like freaking push your own products, right? Come on, don't give me a break here. Uh, how much of like how much is their head up their own asses? Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. it. It makes like seriously. How, how condescending are you to, to to just bitch about Apple and their app store and you can't search call it? But mind you, if I search for word, so, uh, draw something, guess what my first result is? Store.itunes.com or something like that. And I'll get the information about the stupid apps on the app store. Okay? But you still have an Android marketplace which you do the same thing and you're starting to curate your apps even more. So you're not even going to be free and open, right? And yet you say that these are walled gardens and, you're, you're, and you are complaining that you couldn't start Google in, in this day and age. Sorry, starting a search engine in this day and age is kind of crazy anyway. Yeah. Who starts a search engine in this day and age, right? It, it makes Big no dreamers. Sense. It, it's like starting a freaking... Um, uh, a horseshoe place, a blacksmith. When the when Ford just came out with the Model T, yeah, you know, I I don't get it. Like, if you're whining about how things were and you like wish the way mm. the way things were is back to like you know it's always going to stay like that. That's that's stifling innovation. That's saying like you know what because it's going to gain it's going to have our personal gain. We just want the internet to stay how it is. We want everyone else to be open except for when it doesn't apply to us. So our Google Plus information, we're not going to publish that out to the web, right? But it's, but the Google Plus search information is only going to be searchable on Google. And if I log in with my Google account and the first thing I do is get search plus your world and I get spec- and I get promoted results based off people in my circles which is not even actual results anymore. No, it's not. You know, like, come on, give me a break here. You are not the, the end-all and be-all of the internet. You are not protecting the internet. You are protecting yourself. And to think that everyone else is evil except for you is kind of ridiculous. Facebook yeah. is doing its own thing. Facebook has... You know, it's a social uh, network that you go and you put your personal information in and you share with a bunch of other people. There's this, there, you don't share with everyone. You share with a bunch of personal people. Okay? Why would that be indexable? It makes no sense. It's super cynical on their part. I just don't get it. They're always playing the open and free part. But it, you're not open and free. Yeah, they're they're trying to look like like uh, they're trying to make themselves look to be the good guy in, in the situation. Seriously, uh, you know, there was uh, I remember when uh, Facebook, um, you know, there was like information leaking that uh, your information was being sold to companies and blah blah blah. Um, you're you're but you're 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 agreeing to that when you make an account. Uh, Facebook doesn't do anything that malicious, you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, there's other companies that sell your your phone numbers, uh, that sell your email addresses. Uh, a lot of other company does uh, companies do that. Um, Apple does their own thing. Uh, they don't uh, they don't compare themselves to anyone else. They they're kind of like on their own and. They just do what they do, and and when you buy an Apple product, you you know you know that when you buy a product, and that's that's your own personal choice when doing so. So I don't I don't know what they're trying to accomplish here by trying to make themselves uh, look uh, like you know like the knight in shining armor. Where right now there's no there's no real threat to 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 Google like. In 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 the search engine, kind of, you know what I mean? No, it's... like like what like who like what, what like what are you trying to prove? I mean, just just go. Google used to be chill. <laughs> Google used to be cool. I used to like Google, and I don't like them anymore. Is it, has, you want you want to know something? Why I, <clears throat> I just there's something that bugs me about Google, is that when I buy an Apple product, okay, Apple doesn't shove like. Oh, we're doing this for the better of the internet. We're doing this better for you. We're doing. We're. We're. we're, we're we always take the high road. We always. Um, we always have to like, 
you know, prove ourselves saying that, you know, oh, whatever you contribute to Google or whenever you use Google services, you're promoting the free and open web. The, the, when I buy an Apple product, it's because Apple made a product that's good and hopefully you use their, their services. If you don't, then you don't. That's it. But the, for them, it's very clear. You, they make money off you. Point. That's, that's what it is, okay? Apple is a... When you, is, buy, when you buy Windows... It's a pure money. They just want your money. When you, buy, when you get Windows on your PC, okay, they expect you to use uh, SkyDrive. They expect you to use Internet Explorer. They expect you to use Microsoft Outlook. There, there's no question about that. And, no one's den- and Microsoft's not denying that they want you to use those products, Right? They're, yeah. not, they're not shoving some religion down your throat saying, oh, we're, we're on your side. They're not. They're, they're trying to sell you more stuff. Okay? Yeah. That is final. Okay? Yeah. When you use a Google when, – when the president – when the CEO of a company comes and says, oh, these companies are doing things badly because they're, they're openly saying that they want to make money. But for us, you know, we're, we're, we're about innovation. We're, we're going to better mankind with – the open web and blah, blah, blah. It, it's, it just drives me insane. It's like, no, you're not. You are a company like anyone else that wants to get ad revenue based off my personal search history that I log in with my Google search, yeah, with my Google much. account. But please. Yeah, that's pretty much. It's, it's, it's well, super well. cynical. It's, it's, Google's playing the open and free card. It's super cynical. The Google's view is that it's great to be open as long as you're logged into a Google account where your web browsing behavior is efficiently tracked under one login and password. Your email is used in, with one login with username and password. Your social network is logged in with one username and password. And it's just to benefit their advertising business. Yeah. That's their – they're just, just like any other company. Stop <laughs> Just the want crap. to make money. They just want to make money. Stop the crap. Okay? Tim, it, Tim. You are just, not – the president of the internet. <laughs> I am the president of the internet. It's like... I just, am the emperor of the internet. Just promote your services and say these services work well and you are, com- you are competing with these people. That's it. That's all. Stop saying you're open and free. Anyway, it drives me insane. <laughs> anyway, drives me Tim has gone crazy. Tim, just give me one second. I have to let my cat upstairs <laughs> okay. because he's, he's driving me crazy. All right, cool. I'm going to – here, look, look look at him. Look at him. Look at him just lying down there. Look at him over there just <laughs> lying down <laughs> waiting for me to open the door. You, 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 didn't, you haven't heard this guy, but all he was doing for the past – I know. Years, I, I've been hearing him. You heard him? Oh, yeah. He's been meowing. Yeah, he's been meowing for the past 20 goddamn minutes. Hang on a sec. So while you're doing that, I'm just going to stop that rant because probably a bunch of people are. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, pissed, they're pissed at me. They're, they're, they're ticked off at me or they're like, you know. That's the viewers. <laughs> man. Here. Go. Um, Here. So that, that's pretty much it. Um, so also... Uh, I'm going to start talking about as well uh, the Google Oracle thing because, you know, um, I would like to try in this podcast to not talk about these patent stuff because patents, the patent news, it's just, you know, things are not really going to come out of it. But this one's kind of important. The Google. What are you ranting about now? The Google and Oracle uh, patent case. Yeah, what the heck's going on with that? Because I didn't get a chance to read that article. Bring me up to speed on that one. Very simple. Um, Apple. Oh, no, Apple. Jesus. Um, (laughs) Google's Android operating system is based off Java. Okay. Okay. So when you develop an an Android application, it's based off Java. So they use uh, something called a Java virtual machine. Okay. And the Java virtual machine is owned by Oracle. So that's APIs that are connected to, um, to the to to the development site. The the the, the ah my god. There's APIs calling to the, the the Java virtual machine, and the debate is that when you're Java is an open, um, it's an open free programming language that you can develop for. It's open source. You can develop for it on uh, a desktop platform. That's not a problem. You can s- send your apps. You can do whatever you want. That's fine. Yeah. Because underneath GPL, a license called GPL. 
Das is good, yeah. General public license. Yes. Um, when you're but for mobile, it's kind of different. Okay, and usually you need a license. <clears throat> so back in the day, it was Sun, right? Sun owned Java. Yes, they did. So, and now Oracle owns Sun. So Oracle owns Java. Uh, and what happens is that Android is like ninety percent of Android is Java. Okay, <laughs> and in order to use it in mobile, they're supposed to get a license, which they said. We don't need to get a license. Let's just wait, try. wait, wait, wait. Uh, f- so for for mobile, Google has to pay Oracle a license. Not necessarily pay. You need to get a license. You can get a free license if you want, if you negotiate it and whatever. Okay, okay this, because this is because because Java is open source. Java Java is open source, but okay. when you when you when you're going with mobile, there's some licensing. Based okay, so off you you, you, you got to have some sort of agreement. Yeah. Okay. With, with, and this is in the mobile space. Yeah. Okay. Mm, yeah. So, pretty much, um, what happens here is that uh, Google had a choice when they were making Android, and there's actually public emails from An- Andy Rubin uh, that was talking to Larry and Sergey, and you know, saying they were going to debate between going with uh, .NET, Microsoft .NET, and all that fun stuff, the Microsoft route, yeah. or they're going to go yeah. with Java, and they stuck with Java. Yeah. Because they they said that the the Microsoft stuff sucked, so they wanted to stick with Java. And they said even if with the licensing, I'm not okay. I'm not. Just don't quote me because it's not a quote. But I'm generalizing what they said. Yeah. Uh, is that um, we'll deal with the licensing later. If we get caught, we get caught. Okay. They got caught. <laughs> Why? Why would they do that? Because, why? Because they're, they're, I, I don't know. It's just the lazy on their part. Uh, they didn't want to deal with licensing. I guess they thought they can get away with it. They thought they can just fight their way through it, you know. But you know, Oracle saying no, you're going to have to pay. Uh, but Oracle is kind of you know not willing to settle either. So they're both on the they're both on the fence. Let's say they're both being bad. So the 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 question in the case now is that is an API copyrightable? So is so an API just to let you, just to let people know that don't know is a, it's an accessible programming interface, which means that um, for example, if I create an iPhone app and I want it to interface with Dropbox, Dropbox provides um, code for me that's called an API that will communicate directly to their servers. So they did the work for me to communicate to the service, and all I have to do is call upon the object that they provided for me, and I put like a, something <clears> in that says, uh, save file, like uh, I want to save this current file to here, and I call Dropbox to do that. That's what an API is. It's simplifying language. It's part of object-orienting programming language, which you choose objects and stuff like that. So uh, Facebook has an API, uh, uh, Dropbox has an API, uh, probably Hotmail has an API. Probably, I'm not too sure. Uh, but all these APIs uh, can be in, in, from the internet. It could be from the same system. In this case, it's within the the, the application of the Java virtual machine called Davic, which Dalvik is Android's copy, well Google's copy of the Java virtual Oracle's Java virtual machine. So that's what's in question right now. Is that copyrightable? And if the judge says, yes, it is copyrightable, um, there could be some ramifications of how, li- uh, how software is being licensed. It could be that all software needs to be re-licensed. That's what some people are saying, that they have to re-release all software in order to conform with this. It doesn't mean the prices are going to change. But uh, there's a probably that's not going to happen anyway because it's based off of certain things. So I just wanted to... Tell, let people know. Uh, maybe people didn't follow that. I just wanted to say that, but that's probably the last thing I'm going to talk about. This thing, because otherwise it's going to be just a political show, and I don't care about politics. Yeah, we're we're, we're not into the politics. No, very it, much. it's good to know, but I mean, it's it's, it's I, good to know. It's more uh, interesting stuff too. There's more interesting stuff to talk about. 
yeah, we 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 like to we we like to discuss the technology. We like to discuss the software that's out there, the the things that help us in our everyday lives. We we we, we like that kind of stuff, and that's what we really want to talk about in this show. We just want to make it easier for for our our listeners and our viewers. Uh, we, we, just want, we want to make the tech life easier. We want to make sure that you guys know what's going on because, like it or not, technology is consuming always us. Changing. and every, It's always changing. It's consuming us in every aspect of life. So, uh, so that's, so, I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, like the last, uh, the last two articles are probably the last time we're going to talk about religion and all that stuff. I, I, I honestly think that, uh, that this podcast is going to talk about uh, the new stuff, the, the stuff that's going to affect you. Uh, more upfront uh, with technology, and not just basically, you know, the whole, uh, you know, the, the the whole political side about it. You know, it's well, important to talk about it, but yeah, no, we we have to talk about it. We have to make sure that we at least cover it a bit. However, uh, that's that's not our goal. Our, our goal is not to bore you with the politics of 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 technology whether whether we, whether we like it or not it, it's 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 part of the reality because it's just going to get worse and worse these these patent hearings and uh yeah. and, 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 and and infringements and and all this all this stuff is just going to get worse and worse there's going to be more of it in the news uh unfortunately we we we, we do have to cover it because we you know we want to make sure that we we get a broad you know, a broad idea of, of what's going on out there, and uh, but our main focus is to is to focus on the technology, uh, the latest and greatest stuff, and to discuss it and uh, to bash on on companies that we don't like. Exactly. <laughs> uh, like Tim likes to bash on Microsoft, and I like to bash on Apple. I don't like to bash on Microsoft. That's not... You like to bash on Microsoft. I like to bash on Android. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sorry, but. but uh... He likes to bash on Android and Google. Yeah, uh, uh, anyway, but um, no, that's pretty much it. So I mean, that's it. That's all I want to talk about. Did you want to add anything, Vince, to that or? No, I honestly don't have the patience for that kind of stuff right now because it's just it, to me, it's just plain stupidity on on the part of Google. I think it's like uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna base your operating system off someone else's. Technology, let's say someone else's software. Talk uh, to the people that made it. Don't 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 you want to like maybe talk to them? Yeah, it's just I don't know. A, it's just complete mis miscommunication. It's like I, I don't they, know. They could have just prevented us by probably just calling them, just saying, "Look, we want to do this." You know, like like yeah, it's like hey, okay, it's free, it's open source apparently, and let's just roll the dice, take a chance, and see if we get caught. Oops, we got caught. Now you're going to court for <laughs> That's but it. Like, and, and that's anyway. Like, I, I really... Wah. Bah. 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 Uh, Pittsburgh Penguins won 10 to 3. 10 to 3? Oh, God. This series is I, nuts. I hope this series never ends now. Oh. Uh, um, so, yeah, it, just for people that don't watch hockey, um, the Pittsburgh and Philadelphia series has been pretty crazy. And yeah. we're in the playoffs now, and even like Sidney Crosby, like the best hockey player in the league right now, got into a fight. It's like that—that's intense. <laughs> I've yeah, never seen him get into a fight. Uh, well, he—he's gone into a couple of scruffs, but uh, not, not like a yeah, fight. He's—he's he's, he's really, yeah, no, he, he's gone into a couple of fights. I love but, it that uh, he, I love it that he goes to the press. He's like, I hate the team. <laughs> yeah, he's just I, like, I yeah, him. I don't like them. And the guy's like, well, why? I'm like, well, I just don't. I just like them. <laughs> I'm like, all right. I just don't. <laughs> uh, I gotta use that for the next uh, for the next thing that really takes me off. I'll use that. I'll use that against Apple. Okay, cool. Because that's how I feel about Apple. <laughs> I just don't like them. Why? I just don't like them. I just don't like them. <laughs> you know why I don't like Apple, Tim? I just don't like them. No, because you use Apple, <laughs> and I don't like Tim. Uh, he hates me. Ever since school, he hates me. Uh, so since you bought that MacBook. That's ever since I've known you. I've yeah. always had the MacBook. Wait, didn't you use something else before I met nope. you? No. Always the white MacBook. So I had that MacBook when I was uh, in music. The one you were turned like seven times? That's because I was 11. Yeah. And Best Buy support really sucks. If you, okay, if you ever buy a computer, do not get Best Buy support. 
Because it's garbage. Best Buy. Um, yeah, don't. You know what? Just go on the website and get your laptops from there. Go to dell.com.ca, Do that. whatever. Go to hp.ca. Yeah. Get your laptop yeah. there. Get the support from there because you'll probably get better support there than stupid Best Buy bullcrap. Or, you yeah. know what? Find a friend that knows about computers. And you know what? Yeah, I'm, um, yeah because there's nothing that pisses me off more <laughs> than going to Best Buy and having... To listen to these Geek Squad people. Yeah, they're amazing. And the ridiculous prices they charge for the simplest tax, t- tasks. I uh, mind you, there's probably a bunch of people that are just working there to just, you know, get through and just going to something else. But I don't, there's probably I some people that are, 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 that actually know what they're talking about. But I'm just saying, like, 80% of the people in the Geek Squad that I've, ex- I've encountered, oh. uh, they, they say that they're the most random stuff, like, it's it's just a job for them. They don't care. Okay. Yeah, you know, because so, it it yeah. really angers me. It doesn't matter where it's a Best Buy or Future Shop or uh, for U.S. people who listen, Future Shop is like an, is like pretty it's much Best like Buy. Best Buy. It's actually owned by Best Buy. Yeah, it's and it's actually owned by Best Buy, and they have they they're the same thing. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 you know they won't even like see when I fix someone's uh, computer. I explain to them what the problem is, and I fix it, and I explain to them in a manner of which they can understand what I'm saying. And I said, this is what happened. This is how I fixed it. This is how you could avoid doing it again. You know, usually it's like a hard drive will blow up or, or so, you know what I mean? Like regular yeah. wear and tear, you know, yeah. which happens to every system. Yeah. And, uh, after a certain amount of time, or uh, let's say this, your hard drive is defective or, or something like that. Cool. Um, the people, most of the people, I'm not seeing everybody, like, like Tim said, I'm not seeing everybody from uh, the Geek Squad or the Future Shop, Tats, whatever they're called, the, the Nerd Squad, who, who cares what they're called. <laughs> They'll just say, uh, oh yeah, you got a virus. And it's like, no, it, that's not the problem. Well, like, I, I was Backed listening to... data. I, and oh, like... no, they're like, yeah, no, uh, we can't recover your data. It's like, but you didn't even look at the system. I've, I, I have to restrain myself from going up to these people and saying, yeah, okay, uh, here's my card. Call me. You know, because yeah. it's, I, they get royally ripped off. Most of the time, they get royally just completely ripped off. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they don't get an explanation. Uh, they, 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 they give fear to these people using the computers because it's like, oh, you got a really bad virus. Yeah, you shouldn't use the, the, the internet anymore. That's that's what they'll say. Cut off the internet. Cut off like the the best inventions. Yeah, it's like no, you, like you can't use bread. your computer for anything, and and they're they're scaring people, and that's not the case anymore. This is not what it is anymore. It's not like that. No, it's it, it's it, it, it's another or it'll, it'll it'll purely be a hardware problem, and instead of fixing it, well, uh, no, it's a virus, and you got to buy a new computer. It's like yo, no, you don't have to do that. That's that's not the case, man. It's retarded. Like, it's stupid. Anyway, this, anyway the, yeah, it's c- completely crazy. It, um, it, it really, it really angers me because, like, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm passionate about this kind of stuff because I'm a nerd like that, and it, and it really, it really bothers me when people get screwed over, uh, from from these these types of people. Yeah. It's, did you did you just write Best Buy sucks or did I write that? I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're doing yeah. something for the first time. We're using OneNote with like live sync and all that stuff, and it actually works pretty well. So, yeah. Well, Tim just said a good thing about a Microsoft product. Yeah, no, it works because because it's, it's not made by Microsoft. OneNote was bought by anyway. Was it really? Yeah. Did they OneNote? They didn't make they it. I don't know. But they didn't make it. Well, whatever. It's part it's of like, Office. Yeah, it's part of Office because they. Like, <laughs> well, I could say that about half of Apple's things. Anyway, um, uh, moving on. What do you want to talk about now? Uh, Windows 8. The additions are out. And they finally simplified it. Ah. <sighs> it's so much nicer. So remember when Windows. What, what, when did they start this? They started this. Okay, Windows XP. 
uh, was versions. very simple. Was very simple. Home and professional. That was so simple. It Wait, no, like, no, no, there was no, there was but, the media. Uh, the, uh, yeah, media. there there's a bunch of other stupid things, but okay, but anyway. I mean, whatever. But well, I mean, for for, for for at the time, PCs, home, professional. That's it. Yes, because remember, XP is like eleven years old or ten or eleven years old. Yes. Then Vista and, and this brings us to another. This brings me to when I say XP and ten. I'm working on an XP system right now. I'm I'm backing up an XP. Why are you still on XP? Why? It's still supported till 2014. Duh. Here, why are you <laughs> still on XP? I I want to do a poll. I'm gonna do a poll. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna ask our 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 group of. Uh, I think we, I think we got like 25 people or something. What kind of operating system are you running? And the, the the choices are gonna be Linux, XP, Vista, Seven, and OS crap. I mean OS X. I'm sorry, I just had to. <laughs> I just had to. And Tim's just shaking his head. So I'm gonna do that anyway. Why are you still on XP? Why are you still using XP? It's ten years old. It's like eleven years old, man. Like there's. Uh, I, so uh, Microsoft, they they simple they, they went back to simplifying because it was getting out of hand with their and I'm a big Microsoft fan like Microsoft's my bread and butter, and uh, I'm a big fan of Microsoft. I like I like every mostly everything I do. Some things I'm just like, what the hell are you doing? This the, the, these uh, these versions were when I was I got so completely fed up with all. Why do you have to have a home home premium home super duper fantastical? Professional, professional, <laughs> tactical, uh, consumer, whatever. Enterprise and ultimate and professional. Uh, all, yeah, and, that's right. Professional, enterprise, ultimate. Okay. And then there was essentials. What? Wasn't there essentials where you can only run like three applications start, at the same time? Start. You can't change the, the wallpaper? No, yeah, that was starter. And it was, it was starter, that's netbooks. it. Starter is for netbooks. Whatever. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's so stupid. Okay. okay. So they, they started this with Vista. The Vista, they had uh, these. They had like uh, home, home premium, home super fantastical. Uh, they had enterprise, whatever. And this same and and, they, and then they had the same thing with seven. Uh, now with Windows eight, they're gonna have uh, Windows eight home, which is pretty much just called Windows eight. They're gonna have Windows eight professional, and for mainstream consumers. There's going to be two choices for you guys. You don't have to worry about professional. You don't have to worry about enterprise. There's going to be two of them for you. There's going to be Windows 8 and Windows 8 RT. Windows RT, actually. Eh? They're, it's just Windows RT. Windows, oh, Windows, RT. Windows RT is not a choice. Yes, it is a choice. It's, no, uh, you can't buy it and install it. Oh, well, no, I'm Windows, sorry. No, Windows you, RT you is, is WOA. They, they, they changed the name again. Congratulations. You, you guys can confuse the customers they, again. They actually never, Tim, in their defense, they actually never named it. Are you kidding me? This the guy people, who, oh, the, guy, the guy who cr- is in charge it, of Windows. People called it Windows. Blogged Windows. it. He they, blogged they it. it. On arm, yes, they called it WoWa. That's the way they're. He, but now its its name is Windows RT. That's it. Yes, now it's called Windows RT. You can't yes. say that Microsoft did not call it Windows RT. Oh, they actually yeah, but, officially but called it Windows more, on arm. That was more of an internal thing that it was an internal code name that they were using. They called it was it Windows nev- on arm. It was never meant for them to go uh, WoWa for Whoa. every. Oh boy, it was people like us? Sinovsky, Sinovsky. Yes, who is Sinovsky? He's someone like. He's like a super duper geek. Anyway, forget about. Don't listen to that guy. He, he, either he's going to be there right. or he's going to be there. Right, because he's only like the guy in charge of Windows. <laughs> no, not Sinovsky. I'm talking about you. Don't listen to you. <laughs> Just not listen to you. I, I swear to God, I, I will actually like find this. <laughs> I will I find this article. Denying, I'm not denying the fact that, yes, they called it Windows on ARM, he but that was never meant it. for it to be. The actual name of it to be sold to the consumers. It's all I'm saying. This is why I don't like Tim. We we seem like we get along, but actually I hate the guy. And in the show and the show notes, I'm gonna put Vinny just playing. No, I already have that. Vinny hates the Apple and Tim. Anyway, 
<laughs> so, so uh, they okay now. now if you're a consumer, you're going to be going into uh, hopefully not a Best Buy, but you're probably going to be going to Best Buy. And there's going to be two options for you. There's going to be Windows 8 and Windows RT. Now, the difference between Windows 8 is that it runs on x86 architecture, which is Intel and AMD-based systems. So these are like your classic desktops and your classic uh, laptops. Um, tablets will also be available in x86 architecture. So th these tablets will be I, – I haven't heard any news about an AMD tablet. Have you, Tim? No. Yeah. You screw, whatever. It's, I mean, it's the same thing. It's going to be x86. Yeah. So uh, – and he got the blog post. God. Yeah, damn straight. February 9th. Look it up, people. Oh. February 9th. <laughs> the blog post is called Building Windows for the ARM Processor and Architecture where he says Windows on ARM or WOA is a new member of Windows family that builds on the foundation of Windows. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, and who, who are the types of people that were reading reading these articles? People Blo like you and me. Bloggers, bloggers that reported no. on their websites. Anyway, so <laughs> I was interrupted by Timothy Matthews. Uh, now you just let you just made, I lost my train of thought because of you. Well, you have two choices: Windows, uh, Win, an ARM tablet. Yes, thank you. So or... that's just quiet. So <laughs> it was. It's in. You're gonna have. You're gonna have a, a choice between x86 architecture, which is an Intel-based or AMD-based processor system. So these are your classic desktops, your classic uh, laptops, fine. Also tablets that run Intel. The whole, the big difference between Windows 8 and Windows RT is that with Windows 8, it's a no-compromise system. So you could uh, install all your Windows 7 applications with no trouble. Everything is backwards compatible. Everything will work the way your Windows 7 system works now. Windows RT on the other side is pretty much just going to be a media-based tablet. It runs on ARM, the ARM process, the ARM architecture, which is optimized for battery life, uh, minimal heat, and all that kind of stuff. Um, this will only you, – you, will, you, you still have access to the Windows 7 desktop. However, you cannot install um, – the applications that were were built for Windows 7 or Windows XP or Windows Vista. Mm -hmm. You can't install the old style applications. Uh, what what will be available, however, is Microsoft is releasing an ARM based version of one, of Office, which is which is good because you know Office is a big part of Microsoft and a big part of Windows, obviously. And just to add, uh, um, Office is going to be part of Windows RT. So it's not yeah. a separate product. It's when no. you get an ARM tablet, you're actually getting Office. Which, which is which, which is, that is pretty damn cool. It, it is it is pretty damn cool because we all know Office is a crazy expensive application and it's one of the most used applications in the world. Yeah, especially um, if it, do, do, do we did we get confirmation of what actual um, apps are going to be on uh, the the tablet version of uh, Office? Like, I'm assuming OneNote, PowerPoint, Excel, Word. Outlook? I think it's gonna. I think it's. I don't know about Outlook. I don't know. Uh, but I, I'm saying for sure it's going to be Excel, Excel, Word, and uh, PowerPoint, Excel, Word, PowerPoint. And, and probably OneNote. I hope OneNote because that I makes no sense be, if they don't put OneNote. Yeah, I'd say it's going to be those four and maybe uh, Outlook because not everybody uses Outlook. Outlook is more – But they already have uh, a mail app on the OS. So I would They do, do have a mail app. So exactly. why would you add Outlook? So that, that's what I'm saying. Outlook is more for uh, PCs, businessy, businessy kind of – but that, you know what? That's going to be something interesting too, because um, not only is Windows uh, RT, Windows 8 RT, um, going to be Active Sync, so you don't need Outlook, but also the the Windows any Windows version of Windows 8 is Active Sync. So yeah. here's the question: Do we need Outlook anymore? Uh, yeah, I think we still do need Outlook because Outlook does a, a lot more than just email, right? Well, so does uh, the, the, the OS. The OS does calendaring, uh, contacts, sync, uh, tasks. You could, if, if they could just make an app for tasks and voila, it's done. Yeah, but I, I, th I think it's going to be more for – like if you're a, a home consumer, you don't need Outlook like at all. You don't need Outlook at all. Uh, if you're an enterprisey, businessy kind of person, yeah, I think Outlook's going to be a good idea because don't forget, Outlook integrates with Microsoft Link. Now we're getting really enterprisey. Microsoft Link and uh, what's that other one? CRM. 
that other one, uh, I should know this. CRM, Microsoft Dynamics. Uh, no, uh, well, that... SharePoint, 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 SharePoint. It works but, with all that kind of stuff. Okay, but um, um, uh, okay, how can I say this? What's the point of that if you can just get a link app? You can you can solve these problems with just add separate apps. Yeah, but uh, Outlook you don't need is to have like, Outlook to integrate with links. Outlook is like the the go to. You know, it's like the, I think that's PC time. I don't know. I think it's the Windows Seven. And I think honestly, I don't understand how Outlook would work with with this kind of a with this kind of an OS, I, I would understand that they're going to release a new version of Outlook for Windows 7 PCs because that makes sense. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't think... I think Outlook is irrelevant now in terms of w- starting from Windows 8. I, I don't think so because Outlook with Link and SharePoint is a whole nother product. It's a whole nother thing. I, 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 but, I, I saw a demo of it live and it's just like there's so much more that goes into it and that, that can go into it. Because SharePoint also works with Word and, and, and Excel and, and yeah. OneNote. Yeah, so and, uh, there's, there's probably things that we don't know about that like, it's probably just like Outlook exclusive. Um, who knows? Maybe, maybe they're going to consolidate and make it one product and make it just built in the, 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 the OS. I, I honestly think that they, they, if they can get rid of Outlook, that would solve a lot of my problems because Outlook is starting to get really bloated, in my opinion. I, I honestly do not like Outlook anymore. I used to love I, Outlook, but I, I like, disagree. I, I disagree. Like, I still I like, like devices Outlook. with ActiveSync just in terms of how they communicate with uh, Exchange. I'm going super enterprise right now, but yeah. when you're dealing with um, Exchange, and you're dealing with DAG, okay, which is a, a, a an availability group, database availability group, uh, where you can have multiple client access servers. So oh, I'm going super into it. Oh but, man, but people, like if, I, if someone's I'm listening geek- right now, they'd be like, "What the DAG? Like DAGwoods? DAGwoods? <laughs> DAGwood it, sandwiches?" It's, it's basically having two Microsoft Exchange servers. Microsoft Exchange is uh, an, an email server. Uh, yeah. for, from Microsoft that runs on Windows Server and it incorporates very well and most enterprises use it. So if you have, um, if you want to be redundant and you have, want to have two exchange servers, they can sort of need to communicate with each other and they can fail over and whatnot. And that's what we call yeah, a DAG. They, yeah, they could um, be in two different places. They could, well, one could be yeah, like in and they, uh, and they replicate, Canada, the other one could be in like Brazil or something. And the, depending on the link, they can replicate really fast and then what like yeah. the emails and stuff like that. And one, if yeah. one dies, it'll fail over and the other one. Life's cool. But the what Everything works in that respect, and you don't have to change anything for Active Sync or any other client except for Outlook clients. Outlook clients, you have to remap everything. Like you have to redo the mapping, like in terms of how, like if you're going from a single server environment and you're implementing a second one, you're going to need to disassociate, like create a new profile in Windows. Uh, not not a Windows profile, but a mail profile. Mail profile, and yeah. you have to, and it'll get the settings again from with the new DNS name, which doesn't make any sense. Do you, you think uh, but with Active Sync you don't have to? You just point yeah. to a server and it's done because it's all it's based off uh, HTTPS. It's all based yeah. off uh, secure SSL connection. So yeah. I mean, with Windows eight PC, you don't need to have Outlook because it's it's already there. No, you, yeah, you, we might not need to have it. Because it comes with a mail app, uh, who knows? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I guess we're only gonna really know once the once it comes out and we 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 get to see the real difference. Maybe there's an advantage of because I don't think they're just gonna get rid of Outlook, right? Because Outlook, a lot of people use Outlook. A lot of people like Outlook. Uh, so I, um, I I see it's re- irrelevant to be honest with you. It's like uh, I'll give an example. Microsoft does have to deal with uh, OS 10 rising in popularity. When you buy a laptop. Uh, from Apple, or you buy a, a new computer from Apple, um, it comes with a bunch of applications. And a lot of people don't realize, but it comes with uh, a very good uh, mail application, a uh, very good calendar, uh, contacts, um, also with GarageBand and iPhoto and iMovie, and all that fun stuff. But one thing that people don't realize is that you can actually make it work with Exchange. It's Exchange ready out of the box. So you can actually synchronize your contacts calendar and email with, uh, and your and your tasks with your Mac right out. You don't have to buy extra software. So I think this is a lesson that Microsoft is learning, saying that this is kind of useless to 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 limit people when people want to just 
synchronize their stuff. So you think they're so you think you're, they're going to get rid of Outlook and kind of make it just like a, a one whole big package that comes with Windows? Yes, because do because there's a lot of solutions now that like their Office 365 solution, but there's also a lot of other solutions that are uh, that cost less than Exchange that will work the same, and they need better incentive to like saying, oh, well, we're not going to charge you for uh, Active Sync uh, connections. So you can buy an exchange server for your enterprise. It's going to cost you cheaper in the long run because you don't have to buy Outlook. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You know, any Windows APC you buy, it can already work. comes with it. It, it can work it with the enterprise right away. Yeah. Even if you buy yeah. Home, uh, like it's not domain join, but you can get your email. Work. But you can, yeah, you can still get it because you don't. You don't have to. If you have Active Sync, you don't have to be a part of a domain. So I mean, that's cool. I, I think they should do that. Yeah. Yeah, we should stop talking about it now because I think we're getting too much. Uh, yeah, into but w- one thing that does tick me off though is that uh, so people are asking, "Where's Media Center?" Media oh, Center. Yeah. Who's is, asking that? I don't even use. I don't even use Media Center. People that use Media Center. Do you, do you all know you're a Mac user? You have an Xbox, don't you? Don't you want to have Media Center that works with your Xbox? And you can send you don't, stream you stuff. Don't, but you don't have to use Media Center for it. But it's better. I suppose I don't know. You don't have to use Media Center to do anyway, it. Anyway, people that use Media Center are getting this big shaft because they have to buy Windows Pro. No, is, I think it's it's an add-on through Windows Pro. Through Windows Professional? Yes. That doesn't make any sense. I know. <laughs> why why would why would they want you to buy Windows Seven Professional? It does I mean, not make any sense. Why don't you Windows just incorporate 8 it to home? Why don't you just incorporate it to the home edition? It's probably going to be a separate application. A it, separate is, app. it is a separate application, but you have to use Windows Pro. Make no sense. It doesn't make any sense. It, it's I, I don't get it. It's like if you want to kill the product, just say it's not available anymore. Don't give me this crap that you have to do that. Yeah. Um, also, another um, another thing to note for people that are actually starting a business and whatnot, there is an enterprise version. Uh, of Windows 8 that is an, like adds more features to what Windows uh, Pro Windows 8 Pro is. So Windows 8 Pro for a small business user is perfectly fine. Windows 7 Pro. I keep saying Windows 7 Pro. <laughs> Windows 7. Oh, I did it Let's again. Did it again. Windows. <laughs> Windows. <laughs> eight. Windows, eight. W- Windows 8 Pro is good for small to medium-sized businesses. Yes. Even large-sized businesses. You don't have to have uh, Enterprise Edition. You don't have to have it. That's not true. I'm trying to say. That's you don't true. have to have it. That's not true. Because you don't have to have it. don't have to have it, but if you, you want these features... You, so there's if, one, no, if, if you want these extra features, yeah, you got you, you right. and, and, and but if, extra, if But most, most companies and most businesses are fine with Windows, Windows 8 Pro. Oh, yeah. God, why but, is that so hard to say? I don't know. But there are some f- cool features that are part of Windows 8 Enterprise. So yes. Windows 8 Enterprise offers direct access, which is um, a way to not use VPN and you'll still connect securely to a, a, a file server. That's pretty cool. Branch Cache, the same thing, but it's based off Branch Office. Uh, App Locker. Uh, there's some VDI imp- enhancements in terms of uh, Remote FX Protocol and Windows Server 2012. Which that's something very very enterprisey, but that we can understand. And there's there's licenses which I'm not going to get into. Uh, but the one thing that does tick me off with with um, Windows 8 Enterprise is what it is providing is the the cool feature called Windows to Go. So Windows to Go is actually a fully manageable corporate uh, Windows 8 desktop that you can use that you can put on a USB key, give this to your employee, and say, okay, when you boot to your com- when you want to work from your computer. You just plug in this USB key, you boot from it, and voila, you have every all the resources you need. And life's good. So it's like a, and it also solves the bring your own tree, a PC trend. Why is this an enterprise, not in professional at least? It beats me. I don't know. I, I, they, I, I, they're, I don't they're a software company. They got to make money. I, I, however, I can't wait to try it out though because I really want to try that out. It's a cool feature, and yeah. I think a lot of people would really get like, like even if you had it in professional, it would be great, you know. Or if you want to put it, if you want to charge it for something else, charge it as a separate app. Like, you put an extra ten dollars, and for ten dollars extra, you can just get this feature. 
You think they'll you think they'll make it available? No, they won't. Of course not. On the road? It's available for enterprise. No, because they they wanted to do it for software assurance. It's crazy. Just just super do, enterprise do it, right do it, now. Do it, do it do it a feature. Make it a feature. You know? Yeah, uh, my ten dollars make it be okay. Make it a feature. Seriously. <laughs> just just like you know, t- t- Ten dollars, and I, I would buy it for ten dollars. Ten dollars, I would have a USB key that I, that Tim. you know, whatever. Uh, Tim. Yeah. How long have you been recording? Oh, that's a mistake. It's not an hour forty four minutes. No, it isn't. Okay, I'm just making sure. Oh yeah, because I don't. We don't. <laughs> we stop, we're, trying we start. To, we're, we're trying to like you know like <laughs> get the episodes that it's because I had some of my friends. It's like. Yeah, you talk a lot for like an hour. <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah, I know. We got to like kind of cut that down no, a bit. We, we started like around 50 minutes. But in. it's because we have so much fun. Tim, we we right? do have a lot of fun talking about That's this stuff. Fun. We even it's talked fun. before this and we were like, ah, da, da, yeah, we were ah. yelling. I was like, ah, you're stupid. No, you're stupid. Well, you smell like poo. No, you smell like pee. Yeah, we were doing that kind of stuff. Um, all right. What else we got? When, you want to talk about Windows 8? Uh, Windows, Windows 8. Oh. Windows SkyDrive. Yeah, they updated it. No, I just uh, I get yeah, I guess so. I'll tell you what they updated. Sure, tell uh, me tell me what they updated. Oh. So I'm starting so, to get into this. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> that, uh, Tim doesn't care about SkyDrive, but oh, no. Vinny cares. I use Dropbox. Sky. Yeah. Um, SkyDrive is pretty much uh, it's your free space in the cloud. That you get when you sign up. It's free. It's 25 gigs. You get it free. You get to store data in the cloud pretty much with uh, Microsoft. Um, there's going to be an application that's going to work. I don't know why it doesn't work like Dropbox now, which is a big advantage of Dropbox over a, of SkyDrive. Because it's so seamless. It's yeah, like because drag, it, it's... Drag it's, file it's, to it's folder just, and done. It's yeah, folder. done. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. No, I'm, I'm, it's beautiful because like, it's, you know, when you install Dropbox... It's it's also it's free. Uh, Dropbox is, is an application which allows it, and you sign up for it. Uh, how, how much free space does it give you? It gives you like five gigs or something like that. It gives you, gives you like five gigs free space as compared to Microsoft, which gives you twenty five gigs free space, which, yeah. which is. Um, but there's no client, and it's a little bit of a. You know, you gotta log into your Windows Live account to get into your SkyDrive, and and it's it's web based app. You know, you do it through the web, and you you move your files around like that. But you could also sync your uh, some folders, so uh, you can indirectly have access to your SkyDrive. But uh, that's all gonna change because they're gonna come out with an application. Well, well, Windows 8 already has an application. It's called SkyDrive, and you just yeah. go in and have all your files there, which is really nice. Uh, Windows 7 is going to have one, and Windows Vista as well. It's going to have a SkyDrive application where you just go into it. It's going to act at, like a Dropbox, which should have been out of the box, but whatever. That, that's that's so, that will be a good feature. Yeah, it's going to be nice. Um, and, and 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 it's it's a f- it's free 25 gigs. Like that's that's a lot of space for the cloud. Um, yep. Free at least. So uh, pretty much they're updating SkyDrive. It's it's already updated apparently. Uh, you get open document support. Uh, so, uh, in addition to supporting Microsoft Office documents, uh, uh, SkyDrive now supports Open Document. Uh, you can share to Twitter. You can share your to Twitter in addition to email and Facebook sharing. Uh, bigger uploads now you can it supports up to 300 megabyte uh, uploads from a web browser, and uh, short URL support. So pretty much uh, you can use the new sdrv.ms URL shortener to help keep within the Twitter character limit. When you share via that service, That's so there's just some cool little updates that uh, that just came out for okay. SkyDrive. So, if I was someone that wanted to like get this stuff, like there's an app apparently now. Uh, there's an app for Windows 8 Consumer Preview. It's not out for Windows 7 yet. Son of a goat! And it, it okay. Cause you, you want to know something that's funny? Because um, I remember when this product used to be called Live Mesh. It's still okay. Uh, it's still there is still Live Mesh. Okay, Live Mesh is a different product then. It's Live Mesh is 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 pretty much the application version of it right now. Okay, it's, so that was awesome because I can actually have a Mac application, and there I can, is, and I can like use it to sync, and that was cool. It's still there, Tim. But I can't use it for SkyDrive. Yes, you can. This so, okay. Okay, so okay. Let, me let me explain this. I have to let, go- I'll explain this to you. Okay. I'm gonna explain this. To you. Let me explain it to you. I'll, I'll explain it to you. 
Windows SkyDrive Live. Okay, now it's called Windows Live Mesh. It's part of Windows Live Essentials. So when uh, when you when if you want to download Windows Live Mesh, you you just like Google or Bing um, Windows Live Essentials. You download the the little client. It pop ups and, and it asks you it asks you what what you want. You know what do you want to download or install from Windows Live Essentials? Uh, that's pretty much uh, where you download uh, Windows Live Movie Maker, Windows Live Messenger, all that stuff, and Live Mesh is, is is an option. So Windows Live Mesh uses SkyDrive. Now, when you sign up for SkyDrive, when you if you have Hotmail or a Windows Live account, you already have SkyDrive. So you have 25 gigs of storage, right? Right. Okay. You get an additional five gigs. For mesh sh- um, syncing through the mesh client. Okay. Okay. So that 25 gigs and 5 gigs, they're separate from each other. The this 25 gigs. way too complicated. Yes, that's why they're, they're fixing. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm downloading live mesh now for Mac. And like I'm running yeah. the app right now. And I have no so, idea what's going on. Okay. So what you do, well, you're you're obviously gonna figure out fast because it, it, it's once you figure out, it's not that it's not that hard. So you have five gigs of sync store, and and you could sync uh, f- uh, folders, you could sync photos, uh, whatever that's under five gigs, you could sync documents, photos, music, and whatever. This syncs from computer to computer, and it's uh, it, it shows up as a folder. But you, it's you like pretty, what Dropbox, no? It's like Dropbox, but you create this folder yourself. And you just you make a live mesh point to it, and then it, it replicates it on the cloud on your SkyDrive s- uh, storage. Okay, so SkyDrive thing. Okay. Oh yeah. man, I don't get it. Okay, so from what I understand, and tell me if I'm wrong. Okay, there's something called SkyDrive. SkyDrive is like a it's, it's a hard drive that you can access through the, uh, a web page. Yes. Okay. Then there's something called Live Mesh. Yeah. Which, live Mesh is just which an is, app- it's just synchronized from computer to computer to computer to computer. From yeah. But I can connect SkyDrive to Live Mesh, so Sky, Sky uh, SkyDrive can sync to Live Mesh, which then can sync to my computer. No. SkyDrive. You know what? Forget it, Vince. I'm fed up. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> explain this to you one more time. I'm already fed up. <laughs> It it shows that you're a Mac user, eh? No, I it, you don't use your brain anymore. What's wrong with you? Okay, listen. You get a free twenty five gig storage on SkyDrive. Okay, that so, I understand. Okay, fine. Now, part of SkyDrive, there's an additional five gigs, which is separate from the twenty five gigs. Okay, that five gigs is used for Windows Live Mesh. Windows Live Mesh, what it does is it syncs. Uh, you, so you install Windows Live Mesh on your MacBook, mm-hmm. okay? Which is done. And you install it on another computer. So when you install on that other computer, whatever you synced from your MacBook will sync with that other computer. Okay. Where, where does SkyDrive come in? It just uses – it's just part of SkyDrive. So it's completely separate. There's the, – it's both SkyDrive, but however, there's a 25-gig SkyDrive for – so I I cannot get, like I can't upload to SkyDrive using Live Mesh. You can upload to SkyDrive using Sky using Live Mesh. However, it's a separate five gig. It's like two. It's like having two separate hard drives, pretty much. Now, why did they do that? I don't know. I'm so confused. But they're gonna. But they're fixing it. So. Oh my god! So I I just installed something just like, that's completely useless. Windows Live Mesh. Uh, I don't, they're not going to be. I don't think they're to be using it anymore. Well, Tim, no. don't think it's such a big deal, Tim. You're, <sighs> wah, wah. <laughs> Tim's just crying. He's just crying right now. Wah. Oh, my head hurts. Anyway, all right, it's cool. It's gonna it's gonna be fixed. That, that was that was an awesome experience. Uh, all right, so I think um, I think we're done. Okay. I, I think I think that's it. I think I got all my anger out, which I'm going to try to limit. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> because, uh, yeah. Don't limit it. It's, um, yeah. So um, I guess that's it for this week. Cool. Do we have anything coming up th- next week in terms of what we should cover? 
Mm, I don't think so. I don't think so either. I don't know. I don't know. We 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 kind of just gun it. We just kind of like uh, wing it. Gun it. Wing it. You know I mean? cool. Wing it. We just see what's going on. We take the more interesting things. Do we have any wants uh, or needs or gets this week? I don't think so. I don't so. have a want. I don't have a want yet. No. Uh, there's a... Uh, I am disappointed. You're well. You're obviously disappointed in Google. I'm disappointed in this whole stupidity. It's all the internet's fault. I blame the internet. Damn the internet! Hey, check this out. AT&T stores report Lumia 900 shortage. That's good. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Push that little nugget over. <laughs> Okay, so um, you guys can always uh, contact us, tgtp1 at hotmail.com. That's our email you address. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on at, Facebook. At tgtp1. You can follow me on Twitter, at Vinny4. You can follow Tim on Twitter. At Digital Monkeys. D-I- digital M-O-N-K-E-E-Z. Digital that, is mon- my, that is my... Um, that is my uh, public account. Cool. Yeah. And uh, plus one us on Google. Plus one us on Google. Because, uh, that... And uh, when you do search your world, uh, it'll actually come up because now that doesn't work with the regular old-fashioned way. Cool. Okay. So <laughs> plus one us. The, uh, 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 I, I guess you never used Google Plus, did you? Me? Yeah. I have a Google Plus account. I, did I you just... ever use it? I don't like it at all. I just don't like it. Especially with the new redesign? Yeah, I don't like it. I woke up, I, I woke up and I'm like, Crosby right whoa! Now. <laughs> I'm pulling a Sidney Crosby. <laughs> I just don't like it. I just don't like him. I just don't like him. <laughs> I don't like him. You know what? Yeah, I think we should make that a new segment of our show. I just don't like it. I just don't like it. Well, you know what? I have to find a video. I have to find an audio recording of that interview yeah. and just play it over. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Alright, cool. So... That is it for this week. Uh, like us, plus one us, tweet us, watch us on YouTube, tell your friends about us, yeah, spread the joy of that engineer tech podcast. It's the wondrous joy of life. All right, so uh, I'm Vinny Matthews. I'm Vinny Masini. And uh, keep it real, internet. Yeah, internet, don't disappoint us. Do not disappoint. (laughs) Ciao. Ciao.